lives are we supposed to start the podcast? One, two, three. I didn't look and it does better. You do a million times better. If I don't look. Yep. I've been trying not to look. I know. Two for two on the on the nap. What have you had it with? Okay, I've just fucking had it. And I know this just goes back to the old days, but I've just had it with people that can't park. It's not that hard. There are two lines, like they're bright colored lines. This is where your car goes. Your ass of your car should not be in somebody else's line. Your The front of your car should not be on someone else's line. Or the horrible, horrible, shitty parkers that just take up two pe- parking places. I've had it with that. And then two times last week, this happened to me. And I was just like, that is my, I've had it. I was sitting in my car in a parking lot and a delivery van driver had stopped with the hazards on to make a delivery and blocked my car in. I don't understand. Listener, I'm sorry for that. That hurt my ears. Was too. that a screech? It was a total I was screech. so mad. And I eyeballed him. I gave him the dirty eye all the way out. And the more I gave him the dirty eye, the slower he got. And I had to wait for him to get his fat ass in the truck, fuck with his phone, put his seatbelt on, have a cup of gulps of coffee before he moved his van. I think that's bullshit right there. I've had it. So I've had this happens to me all the time. It's either at my office, which they could clearly pull in to a parking spot, right? Plenty deep at the front of my office, but he he or she, the delivery, pulls right up and blocks four parking yes. spaces. So then I am waiting right. to park in a building that I own, right? In my parking space that I own, and sometimes it's fifteen to twenty minutes. And finally, I have to get out of the car and I'm like, I have a meeting. I need to get into this parking space. Like, I need for you to move the delivery truck. And there's so many other places wherein they could stall. Like, if he just went 20 feet further, it wouldn't block anybody. If he turned in, it wouldn't block anybody. Same thing oftentimes when I go home to my house. The Instead of pulling directly in front of the house where it's not blocking a driveway, The truck intentionally is parked in front Front of the driveway. driveway. All you have to do is go 15 to 20 more feet, and it's not blocking anybody whatsoever. So I don't know what this is about. Here's what I think it's about. I think that it's easier for the delivery driver when they make a delivery just to block cars and pop into the store facing, the the front facing part of the store versus to park and walk, you know, park, get out of the car, walk it in, then get back, pull out of the parking place. But I don't think they realize like they're doing that 50 times a day. And that means they're blocking four cars in their spots all day long. The situation is this, you're talking about literally 10 to 15 more steps if they pulled to a space where it hindered no one. In the, in the example of my front yard, literally it's just a delivery truck length Furthermore, so many times I've been coming home and there's a UPS truck or a FedEx truck or an Amazon truck right there blocking the driveway. And I just think to myself, if you just would have taken it over the finish line right, and just maybe not press so hard on the brake, that's the smallest distance possible, then this driveway would be completely right. accessible. But you're waiting on the delivery person all the time. Yes. I had one time I had to go in and get my phone fixed. And when I came out... There was a guy, it was a FedEx, I'll never forget it. He had blocked four of us in and we couldn't get out. And he is in there yik yakking. It's about two years ago. And I, 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 I did go right up to him and I said, I have no idea why you think it's appropriate to block all these cars <laughs> in when you're dropping something off. How'd this play out? Oh, let me just tell you how it played out. He looked at me like, go fuck yourself <laughs> you ugly ass old woman that's exactly what it looked like but i felt better but it, no he didn't he didn't hurry he didn't hurry car. it was Mm-mm. absolutely no he blocked everybody in didn't give a fuck and was yik yakking about his phone like i'm not even sure he had a delivery he might have had a phone issue oh and he's See, in there they're using these these delivery huge trucks. trucks almost like a cop can block with a cop car right like a personal vehicle they're giving the delivery truck too much power total too much power. It doesn't have a siren. 
No. It's not an ambulance. It's not saving lives. It's not a fire truck. Although sometimes with Amazon, it might be saving my life. It depends. It could be, (laughs) but there's just so many fixes for this problem, this blocking problem. Pull up at the side of the building, park in a parking lot, park in a park, like two. I don't care if like a big delivery truck takes two parking places, like at the back of a parking lot, swing for the fences. But when you're the first parking row and you're blocking people in, that's just horseshit. It is because, I mean, so many of us are so busy. And if you get stuck 10 to 15 minutes, it makes me late. And if I'm going to a hairdresser, then Then they're late. His whole day late for the next appointment, the next appointment. It's this whole domino effect. And it's just chaos with the delivery drivers. Do you think it's arrogance or self awareness, lack of self awareness on the delivery truck driver? I think it's neither. I think it's like I'm delivering. I'm pulling up and we're all just such, you know, savage animals about wanting our shit <laughs> delivered to us. We're a part of the problem in this. Uh, there's a no, you no know, question I mean, we about can that. sit here and rag on the delivery drivers all day, but we're a huge part of the problem. Because we continue and they to order. Have all these deliveries nonstop and, you know, their trucks are loaded completely loaded. They have a finite amount of time to get it all done. And they're just probably like, it's 125 million degrees because nobody will do anything about the climate. Right. And so these guys, you know, are just trying to make some money. (laughs) And so I don't know that it's a power trip or I think it's just like all these bitches are ordering all this shit. I'm trying to hustle and get all this shit done so I can get home and maybe play a video game or watch (laughs) a movie. And I, I, I don't know that it's intentional or nefarious. I just think we're a part of the problem. If I was a delivery driver, full disclosure, I might do the same. If I was a delivery driver, I would just probably throw it out the window as it passed by. <laughs> right, I'd just be passing by and like, here's your box. <laughs> so let me tell you what I've had it with. What have you had it with? So I just got back from the airport yesterday. And this problem is huge. And it is conveyor belt hogs. So what happens is you go and you put your purse and your suitcase on one side of the TSA conveyor right. belt, and it goes through the X, X-ray right. machine. You go through the personal X-ray machine yes. to make sure you don't have a gun or whatever on you. And then you get out the other side, and you always got one person that is right there at the very beginning yes. of the conveyor belt. And that person is grabbing their stuff instead of letting all of the stuff go down and sliding their bin all the way to the end. Right. They're putting their shoes on right there. Oh, my God. Yes. They're putting their um, laptops back in their bag. They're putting their belts on. They're organizing their purses. Yes. Putting their ID back in their wallet. And and then I'm just like, my stuff is right there. If you would literally move, it's like the delivery truck drivers. If you would move five feet down, I would grab my shit and do all of this not in the conveyor belt line. There's no excuse for it. They have a whole area of chairs where you can go put your shoes on, but they stand there, hog the whole space and redo their purses, put their shoes on, put their belts on. It's a conveyor belt hog. Conveyor belt hogs are the worst. It's a massive problem. It's a huge problem. I'm surprised TSA with all their power doesn't move them along. Well, here's the thing that gets me. TSA screams at the top of their lungs on the entry. Right. Right. They're dropping the ball on the exit. Absolutely. I completely agree. They we need, need some screaming on the exit. They need someone on the other side grabbing those trays and just sliding Slam. all the way down, right. just like they do with us when we put them on. You know, they start bossing you around before you get to the x ray. Right. It's chaos after the x ray. Right. They just kind of let it go. They drop the ball. They quit being bossy. They quit screaming at us. That's true. And it's like, if you're going to be that big of a nut, be that nut through the whole experience because the fuckery happening on the other Other side side of the x-ray machine is insufferable. And standing there watching some person that you know has traveled a lot, acting like it's their maiden voyage in an airport. (laughs) They all do that, though. Fumbling around the machine getting all their personal shit together instead of grabbing the fucking tray, walking all the way down to the end, getting your shit away from everybody else. And so I've had it. I mean, the airport had it are just... You could start today and do an airport had it five times a day, and I don't think you would finish in a year. This is what gets me is, you know, sometimes people on social media will say about us, they're just so negative. They're just so, you know... They're so negative and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, here's the deal. You, with all of your positivity. Positivity. It's amazing that you can wake up in the morning, (laughs) 
take a commercial flight, you know, go to the grocery store, park your car, do all of these things without ever getting irritated. We cannot. We cannot. And I just find it hard to believe that really anybody can. It's not sustainable. And all I recommend for these people is if you can actually go through the airport and never get irritated with another human being, not one time, bottle that shit up and, and market sell it. it. That's what I was just going to say. Because so I will buy it. These are the people that the minute, the minute somebody just slightly scratches something that might mildly offend them, it's a stage five meltdown. Right. Throw yourself down on the floor and cry like a baby. Yes. No, exactly. I agree with that. Welcome to I've Had It. We're in a great mood today. <laughs> Bright and shiny today, as always. <laughs> We're in a great mood. I'm Jennifer. I'm Angie. There's just no question she's the star of the show, but the rising star of the show is Kylie. Kylie? Our little sensation. Hello. How's it going? It's going good. Do you have anything for us? I have a bunch of voice memos. Excellent. Oh, great. Let's start there. Hang on real quick. Richard? Yes, ma'am. You there? Yeah. Are you in a good mood after hearing all that? You guys make perfect sense every time <laughs> Thank I you. hear you guys. Richard's I've always in a good mood. Thank Richard. You, Richard always is in a good mood. Even positive Richard is proof that we are surrounded by nothing short of enablers. <laughs> you know I mean? Pumps, if I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. I feel safer. America feels safer. Our listeners feel safer. Ever since you installed that Simply Safe monitoring program at your house out in the suburbs. Yes, I absolutely love it. I do feel more safe and comfortable when I'm at home by myself. I know. With, I mean, you're almost an empty nester. Your youngest one is always out and about. And I particularly feel a lot better knowing that 24-7, 365, a live guard protection is made possible by the new smart alarm wireless indoor camera and is available with the Fast Protect Monitoring Program. Listener, you know that this podcast has got to keep pumps secure. And Simply Safe, our partner, has secured the star of our show. Right now, I've had it listeners get a special 20% off any Simply Safe system when you sign up for Fast Protect Monitoring. This huge offer is for a limited time only. So visit simplysafe.com slash had it. That's simplysafe.com slash had it. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Listener and pumps, I think it's super important to make certain investments in your life. And one of those things that I value is a fantastic bedding sheet. It's so important. Thank God we have discovered Bull and Branch. I mean, I always go to bed early. I get off my phone early so I can have high quality sleep. But if my sheets are off, screws everything up. My sleep is off. Yeah. Bowl and Branch, when you get in those sheets, it feels like you are slipping in to five-star hotel quality sheets, and they're affordable. They're so soft and feel like butter on your skin. Sleep better at night with Bowl and Branch sheets. Get 15% off your first order when you use promo code HADIT at bowlandbranch.com. That's Bowl and Branch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D, branch.com. Promo code had it. Exclusions apply. See site for details. All right, Kylie, who is our first contestant on this game show of ours? I've had it. Uh, first, we've got Presley. Okay. Hi, Pumps and Jennifer. I am absolutely obsessed with your podcast, but I'm just going to hop right into my latest I've had it. And something I've had it with, absolutely had it with, is when people defend bad behavior, especially bad behavior of grown ass adults. Let's cut the shit. <laughs> if someone's a bitch, let's just say it. Like, let's not defend them and be like, oh, that's just so and so. Like, that's just how they act. No, so and so is just a bitch. And let's face it, like, no more defending them. Anyway, that's my latest. I've had it. Love you, ladies. Love her, love Presley. Presley's she's great. She's, speaking of enabling. Speaking of enabling. Mm -hmm. No, but Presley's on to something. Like the people that are shitty and bitchy and the people are like, oh, that's not really how she really is. She has a good heart. This is what I say to you when people tell me they run into you at Walmart or a restaurant. I say, she's really got a good heart. She's really not a Karen. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, I just... I hate that. If somebody's a bitch, just say they're a bitch. 
I don't know why. I think there's this whole thing in life where we think everybody has to like everybody. That's not true. You don't have to like everybody. You have to be cordial and polite and work with people that you don't like, but you don't have to think, oh my God, they're the best or oh my gosh, they're so great. You can just be like, I don't like them. I think they're bitchy, but does that mean I'm going to be shitty to them or not have a professional relationship with them? No. It just means they're a shitty person, in my opinion. And what I found that if the shitty people think I'm shitty, I like the shitty person better. Same. Because if I have a shitty person that likes me, then I think, what the fuck is wrong with you? (laughs) I like, I'm just attracted to more cynical people. Right. Like there are people whose entire lives have been just straight down the fairway. Right. They haven't had problems or they've had problems and have an incredible ability to have like chronic denial. Right. And they just absolutely don't deal with them. I like a friend that's a little weathered. Right. I like a friend that's <laughs> we- God. weathered a storm that has more depth. But what Presley's talking about is where people make excuses for just people being complete assholes. Right. Shitty. Yeah. But I will say this. If somebody's consistently shitty, then you have a lot of corroborating evidence that that person is a shitty person. But sometimes you're having a shitty day. Agreed. That's the exception. You're having a shitty day and you just kind of had it with everyone and the next day you reset. Right. So I think there can be situationally shitty people. Absolutely. And I don't think just because you're shitty one night, you're shitty all the time. No. But I think if you have a pattern of behavior that says you're shitty, an arrogant prick, then right. you just have to say, arrogant prick. Somebody comes to mind. DJT. He's so far above the arrogant prick into the <laughs> malignant narcissism that that it's not even a comparison. Agreed. All right, Kylie, who's next? Up next, we've got Steph. Jen, pumps, Steph here from the UK. Although right now I'm coming to you from a holiday in Ocean City, New Jersey, and I have had it with flags. More specifically, the displaying of American flags. Like what the fuck? <laughs> I have just walked 15. 20 minutes max in a straight line down this street in New Jersey and I have counted 102 of your star-spangled whoppers. Do you guys forget where you are? What is the deal? (laughs) Like in the flower beds hanging from the rooftops. The whole world is giving you side eye right now and shit like this does not help. Anyway, it's weird. Somebody please explain it to me. Much love from your Six foot blonde, blue eyed Brit. Ah. And yes, it was me that left that five star review hitting on pumps. I love you. <laughs> I love that. And I love Steph, that she gave love. her stats to kind of yes. promote herself. Steph sounds hot. Totally. I like, totally look at hot. you. You could have a girlfriend across the pond. Six two. Blue eyed, blue blonde, eyed hair. blonde hair. I might mean, just be right up my alley. <laughs> But I'll tell you what, she's on to something. She's so right. It's like because we're... when you're raised, in the wherever you're raised, that's your normal, right? And this overt patriotism is pounded in us, and you think it's normal because that's all you know. Right. And then you travel abroad, and you realize, you know what? What's the deal here? And I'm sure the patriots that are listening are going to lose their fucking minds. So this is your trigger warning right here, right now. But the situation about it is this: quit being such a black and white thinker and be gray about this. The country was designed to be criticized and corrected in its foundation. So it's possible to say, I love America. I like living here. I'm glad I'm an American. But, you know, the fact that poor people with cancer go into complete debt and can't treat it seems immoral. The fact that we live in abortion ban America where a 14, 15-year-old rape victim um, has to carry a baby right. because she's poor and nobody can take her to a blue state to get an abortion. That's fucked up. So that's a criticism. The fact that our Supreme Court justices are hanging out with billionaires, getting right. all these free, Bought and paid for. free gifts, take, taking away rights from others. We get to criticize that. 100%. My whole thing with the flags is like, I love, I love a 4th of July celebration. I love the fireworks. I love the flags out on that day. Great. That's one day a year. I don't feel like the majority of people have their flags out all the time. I feel like it's a 
a minority of people, but I think they're trying to oversell something because they know there's a part of it that's broken. They're trying to force I it upon other people. I think you're giving a low IQ people a lot, a lot of, of credit. credit right there for being like that nefarious. It This is like a caveman impulse. <laughs> okay. This is like all of America. I mean, there's no deep, you know, Freudian brokenness where they would even think hooked up to true serum and a polygraph <laughs> that the United States of America is anything but the greatest superpower that ever lived. And you know that because we both grew up in the 80s. <laughs> I remember the first time I ever traveled abroad, I went to Germany and I was shocked that it was so functioning and nice and clean and first world with less poverty than what I saw in the United States because we were raised during the Cold War, and it was like, we are the best country in the world. We are right. the only country that has freedom. This is a patriotic indoctrination is what this is. Right. I just, uh, 104 flags. There is this thing where it's like this it's real childlike impulse. Love America or you're not a patriot. And it's like, well, of course we love America. Of we're course from we're here. Right. Of course we love America. Of course we're patriots. Well, well, we don't have to put it on we our... We don't have to have a flag on our car and on our house and on our business and or whatever. Or on our houses. Yeah. Wear, sh you know, flag shirts all the time. What about the... <laughs> my favorite. My favorite shirts are like the um, muscular, homoerotic, Photoshop Donald Trump shirts with him like wrapped up in a flag and he's like totally cut with muscles and you see some like redneck guy wearing it and I'm like what's the Freudian shit in that uh, that you're wearing a photoshopped muscular version of Donald Trump wrapped in an American flag on your chest to show your patriotism I think that that is just, there's so many lies on that. I can't even talk about it. I can't, I can't even even get to the flag because I can't get over the muscled up good body of him. It's pretty gay, in my opinion. It's it homoerotic. Is, right. But I don't, but I think it goes back to low IQ. I don't think they're, they're getting that. I think they think this is him. I think they believe that's what he looks like. Well, it's kind of like, it's the same way they view Jesus. White, right. muscular, you know, right. it's like the, the, where if Jesus did live, he would have been brown. Right. Brown right. skinned. Right. I mean, no question about it. Right. But it's always like, you know, there's this version of the idealized man and they, you know, Photoshop Trump up to look like that. They Photoshop Jesus up. Even, you know, as recently as five, 700 years ago, you'll see a portrait of Jesus and he's white. Right. You know, so they Photoshop these men up. They whitewashed Jesus. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. he and, absolutely would have been and brown. And they muscle washed fat ass Trump. <laughs> No, that was some Photoshop genius because and, um, Kylie's be onto something. It is homoerotic. I'm sorry. It just for this butch man that probably hasn't, you know, AK 47 would never touch a Bud Light in his Burps life. Why orgasm? Totally shooting shit, you know, all the time. You know, maybe make some squirrel stew or something, and then he's got <laughs> on this fucking, you know, homoerotic Trump, <laughs> all muscular, and it's like, oh fuck off. Yeah, that shit. It's unbelievable is what it is. Okay. The trigger warning will now um, cease cease for our little snowflake hate listeners. Okay. Up next, we've got Leanne. Hey, Pumps and Jay Welch. This is Leanne from Toronto. And I have had it, had it with Facebook Marketplace. And I hate <laughs> myself for continuing to post <laughs> shit on Facebook Marketplace because I know that this is the place where brain cells go to fucking die. <laughs> OK, I write a comprehensive ad. Everything is in that ad. And yet I get questions like, will you take twenty dollars? <laughs> no, you fucking idiot. It says in the ad, the price is firm. OK, where in the city do you live? Read the fucking ad. It says like these people have been hit hard with the fucking idiot stick. <laughs> I hate Facebook Marketplace. It cheeses my thrusters, and I hate myself for continuing to post shit on Facebook Marketplace. I've had it. Leanne, my question for you is, why are you a masochist? <laughs> you know, why, why do you keep doing the same thing and expecting a different yeah. result as established? I'm guilty of it myself. Not as, on Facebook Marketplace. As established on this podcast... One thing we've had it with, and I would think you've probably had it with too, 
or stupid questions. And Leanne, here you are in the mecca of stupid questions, <laughs> which is Facebook. <laughs> Well, you can't help but find stupid questions because you're on Facebook. I don't think there's anything dumber on the planet than Facebook. It's the dumbest of the dumb. I would love to make a big comment on that, but I've never been on Facebook. So I don't know a lot that's going on on Facebook. I did set up an account for you about 15 years ago that I operated and posted For about two days or something. Oh, for about three or four months, I would post like, Jennifer is my best friend. I love her more than (laughs) anything on the planet. She is amazing. And the people would respond, oh, that's so sweet. And I I would respond and it would say, Angela Sullivan. And I'd put, I know, I just love her so much. She's the best. (laughs) And I would just sit. I remember you had that account. I would just sit crying, laughing. It was so fun being you on Facebook. I mean, I'm sure it was just more fun. Every post was about me. (laughs) (laughs) I wish we could find that. That'd be funny. I could probably find it. Can we bring that back? Uh, Yeah. I mean, I never deactivated. I don't think. I'm sure it exists. I think pumps could use your help on Instagram, too. Yeah. 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 A lot of things. We both struggle on apps. Way more me than you though. Yeah. You struggle the most. I struggle the most. Yeah. Okay. But the Leanne thing, here's what I've had. Cause I had a garage sale one time with my kids clothes and I spent hours and hours and days and days organizing it, I remember getting this. it all together. Like I was going to get rid of all the baby clothes. I mean, spent a lot of time doing it. And I think I had like, okay, this baby outfit is a dollar or 50 cents. I don't, I can't remember what it was. And somebody would come and go, can I give you five cents? And I'm just like, five cents? Like, fucking steal it. I'd rather you steal it than give me five cents. <laughs> and this is the same kind of thing. Like, I don't want to bargain with you. Maybe we just do a garage shell and put shoplifters welcome. Shoplifters, please come and just get <laughs> the shit out of my house. Uh-huh. But yeah, I mean, the the going back and forth, and I, I agree with her 100%. My ex-husband will send me texts. I will send back the exact, like, step one do this. Step two, this. Step three, this. I mean, it, it, you, a first grader could follow the instructions, know all the information, be well aware of what it is. He wants to do a follow-up co- phone call where he regurgitates the questions to me and say, is that right? And I've had it with that. It's the stu- So, I mean, now I just don't answer those phone calls. Right. But, but your ex-husband is a special case of incompetence. Right. No, and agree. he loves... Loves, loves to communicate about frivolous details. I remember right. one time a long time ago, Dylan and Emily were on a t-ball team and your ex-husband was the coach. Right. And he sent out probably a, and I'm not exaggerating here, 15 paragraph email. <laughs> it was at least three pages. About a four to five year old t-ball team. Right. The first request in the email was, please send your kids to practice. Mind you, it was 105 degrees. In long sleeve pants and long sleeve shirts, so that when they slide into home base, slide this is they their won't first get ball. they won't get skiff marks. And I'm thinking, slide into home base, they're sitting on the ground studying and looking for roly polies and ladybugs. Right. I think that was the year that a lot of the kids went to third base. If the ball came off the tee, they would yeah, run the wrong. It was. It was. We were no sliding. Let's just a, safe to say it was a no slide zone. It was an unbelievable. Right email that had absolutely nothing to do with four and five-year-old t-ball team. Right. No, I. but don't you just hate when you send like the perfect email or the perfect text and somebody asks you something, it's a question that's already in the email and the text. It's just like, let me tell you, reread. Let me tell you what recently happened to me. So I was setting up a a, an account with somebody with that I already have an account in, but I was trying to set up a new business account. And so I said, hey, I need to set up, I have a new business, I need to set it up in the account. And he says, oh, let me know when I can stop by for us to talk about this. And I respond, I don't have time to meet in person. Right. Can you please email me the documents? And he responds, do you have time for a call? And I said, no, let me know, can you email me the documents? He emails me the documents, I fill them out, then he sends me a, you know, like signature DocuSign thing. I docusign it. Much to my surprise, <laughs> the meeting nor the phone call were required at all. It Shocker. was done in 2.5 seconds. Well, it's the grandstanding. Th- that's just straight up grandstanding. Yeah. All right, Kylie, who's next? Okay, up next we've got JR. I am obsessed with you guys. I had to 
re-download Instagram just to leave you this message of what I have fucking had it with. <laughs> um, I had to take a social media break. Anyway, I have fucking had it with a long term couples, couples who have been together forever, they're gonna get married, they are married, who are all over each other. And they're both like your good friends. You know, I want you to picture Pumps, I should say Angie, but like Pumps with Jennifer and Josh. And Pumps, imagine if Jennifer and Josh were all the fuck over each other. Oh, gag. Making out on the couch, leaning on each other, kissy, lovey, dovey. I'm like, what the fuck is that? No, I hate it. I hate it. I fucking hate it. Um, love you guys. Keep fighting the good fight. There's nothing grosser. There's nothing grosser on planet Earth than grown adults groping in public. It is disgusting. I mean, eh, gag a mag. <laughs> I think, you know, I remember this couple and we would go to these like dinner club parties and whatnot. And they'd been married a long time. They'd popped out a couple of kids and everybody'd get all liquored up and I'd look over and on the ottoman, this couple is full blown. I mean, like Showtime Skinamax style <laughs> makeout. It's not quite soap opera. I mean, and it's not quite porn. It's that Skinamax <laughs> level of makeout. Titties are being grabbed. A hand is up between the legs. There's dry humping. It's like, <laughs> it's like I, they're at home alone. And I remember like wow like are they <laughs> exhibitionist like i understand like maybe you, you know you're drunk you got know, too much to drink and you but... reach over and give your partner a smooch but this was a full blown soft core porn demonstra demonstration and i thought to myself well maybe this is a one off right cuz i remember you called me cuz i went outside to smoke for you to describe it to me i thought maybe this was a one off and then i go to another party and the exact same thing happens again. <laughs> so I thought, well, maybe it's a two-off. Maybe they took some ect ecstasy or right. something. Maybe you know? that can't be how they normally act. Right. And so then it was, and then it was just consistent across the board. It's full-blown soft core porn anytime they're at an event. That see, I have been shocked about that for 20 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, that to me is just something is fucked up with yeah. that. I think, I mean, I think they're exhibitionists. And maybe it's like an invitation to kind of lure in other swingers. Maybe he can't get it up in the bedroom. But he can get it up if they're in, in front, front of people. people. I don't know. There's some there's some shit but that they need But that's just to... not normal. I mean, that's to the extreme. Like, I've never seen extreme. No, it was bad. But yeah, I just even think, like, if you and Josh sat at a table with me and started French kissing, I would leave immediately. I would just be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> That is disgusting. There, I don't want to see anybody French kiss in it's public. A, it's an insecurity in the relationship when you feel Agreed. the need to do it in front of other, other people. people. Like you're trying to prove something to yes. other people. Because if you're completely confident in your relationship, you would have an awareness that I don't need to prove my love to anybody publicly because I don't give a shit because we both know. Right. Which reminds me, Kylie, aren't you an Anna PDAers? Under your definition, probably. Okay, well, what, what definition are you using? I mean, you guys don't even like hand-holding, no, sitting I'm on the same the, side of the hand booth. Hold. We I hand-hold. Josh you and I hand-hold. sit on the same side of the booth? Yeah, we sometimes sit on the same side of the booth. What? On purpose? Yeah. Like, not with other couples? Yeah, alone. Kylie! You're sitting... I'm, okay, hand-holding is fine. That's fine. A little same, pat. Same side of the booth, red flag. Yeah, Unacceptable. Like, Okay, I'm going to put this in the young love category, yeah, right. and I'm going to put it on watch. Yeah, yeah, it's on the watch list. It's on the watch list. Okay, I think you're. It's a slippery slope. Um, just like Jr. the caller said, it could be annoying to those around you, right? And so, but it's on watch, young love category, young pretty lesbian category, right? It's not a complete, total red flag ban. But you and Anna and your PDA are on watch. All of our heterosexual male listeners and lesbian listeners are probably saying accelerator smash to the floorboard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At what point, what year mark do we need to cool it? Uh, I would I would start it pretty soon. Uh, yeah, because you guys just had your two-year anniversary. Because I'm thinking by three, we just need to be hand-holding, maybe a pat at the booth. Hand-holding, a peck. Those things are appropriate. I don't have any issue with no that. No issue with a peck. Come. No issue with a peck. An arm around each other. A hand on a thigh and That's a little fine tap. Too. Totally fine with that. The larger question that you all need to analyze with these public displays of makeout are who are you doing it for? Right. I mean, maybe we're exhibitionists. 
I doesn't smell I like. like the I mean, if you're not if you're not swapping spit, I don't think no, that yeah. counts as an exhibition. I think they have. I think they have early on. I for sure would say we have early onset PDA. Yeah. Early onset PDA. I'll work on it. But Kylie, don't don't change on. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't listen. change on our behalf. Just stay. Keep it out of and the office. Anybody who listens to us, don't take anything we say seriously. <laughs> That's I mean, what. People, Except do not French kiss your husband or spouse or wife or anybody long term in front of other people. Like a French kiss. That's out. All the titty babies in the comments. Yeah. They always get so upset when you come at them. I want everyone to know I've probably done 500 of the things you've had it with. Oh, oh everything every that we've day. had it's just it with. How it goes. Unfortunately, we do. Everything that we've had it with. We absolutely do. And people take us way too seriously about shit. Here's the only fucking shit that we're serious about and the hill that we will die on are our political beliefs, right. which we believe are come from within us for moral purposes. Right. That hill I will fucking die on. Come fire at us. I mean, we will sit and fucking take that shit all day. With pride. But all this other petty bullshit, you guys need to fucking chill out. <laughs> Can you believe anybody would take us seriously on that shit? It's ridiculous. I think a lot of people agree with this is what the deal is. It or is they identify we called them out. Right. Okay. I was going to tell this. So just Saturday night, I was with a group of girls and we were at dinner and this older couple, like the older lady came and then the older husband came. So we thought, or the older man came. So we thought maybe it was like a bumble date. That's what we thought about. Well, then they switched over to the same side of the booth. And I'm not even kidding. My entire table was like, Oh my God, they're sitting on the same side of the booth. Oh my gosh, they're sitting. I mean, like we were, could not wrap our heads around it, that they would just sit on the same side of the booth and they were like in their sixties, but they went right into sitting sound on, on the same side of the booth. And it just, we were shook. There's two options for this. Okay. Right. Option number one is they're the problem and that's fucked up. Right. Option number two is we're the problem and we're fucked up. And I think it could go either way. I was going to say, we definitely know we're fucked up. So, that's so I could make an argument solved. for both sides in that. For me personally, it would injure my neck right. to be eating with my head turned like this the whole time. And I like, I'm an eye contact person. I have person. to have eye contact person. That eye contact is more intimate to me than yeah. the touching. Right. Um, I watched a Curb Your Enthusiasm episode on the plane when we were on our way back from the tour. And Larry likes to sit on the same side of the booth to avoid eye contact. <laughs> so I can support it in that regard. He's like, right. you know, you sit on the same side of the booth. You don't have to make eye contact. Right. It's a less intimate dinner. And I was like, okay, if you're doing it for that purpose. There's some logic to that. I get it. Yeah. I mean, pumps, when I think about you, I always think about you battling a bra. It's the worst. Big boobs are the worst until you find a great product. I've noticed since you started wearing Honey Love. I don't see you tugging and shifting and twitching, and your boobs look great. Well, thank you. No, Honey Love is so comfortable. I sometimes forget I have it on. What do you think about their leggings and other things they have in the crossover bra? How comfortable are those? They're great, and the shapewear is excellent. The leggings are so comfortable, too. I like it all. I do, too. I absolutely love their underwear, shapewear, bras. It feels like you're not wearing any, which we love here at I've Had It. Listener, you can treat yourself to the best shapewear on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com slash had it. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off honeylove.com slash had it. Cinched, snatched, and lifted. It's hot girl season for pumps. Thanks to Honey Love. <laughs> Pumps, I'm so grateful that the folks from Jenny Kane, where we get all those cool clothes, have launched this skincare line called Oak Essentials. The skincare line is every bit as wonderful as the clothes. Absolutely. What are your favorite products from there? I love the oil and I love the balm. I'll tell you that body oil, the Oak Essentials Do Body Oil in particular, it's lightweight and it absorbs instantly and improves tone and texture for a head to toe glow who doesn't want that i mean i can't think of anybody oak essential is the go-to skincare brand for radiant and glowing skin our followers get 15 percent off your first order when you use code had it at checkout that's 15 percent off your first order o-a-k-e-s-s-e-n-t-i-a-l-s.com be sure to use the promo code had it whether you're starting from scratch or filling in the gaps Oak Essentials gives you one less thing to worry about. Treat yourself because you deserve it.
All right, up next, we've got Sarah. Hey, Kylie. Hi, ladies. I am here to say I've had it with internet panhandling. It has come to an epidemic proportion and it must be stopped. I literally had a friend today post on her Facebook that she's counting down the 12 days till her big Parisian vacation. But here's my Venmo if you want to buy me a croissant or a cappuccino. Bitch, if you can't afford a pastry when you get there, then keep your ass at home. I've had it. Sarah, Jeez. this is something that we have not discussed, yes. which is a massive, egregious violation of the social contract to solicit donations for a luxury European vacation. vacation. I can't even believe somebody has the balls to do that. That is bananas. Kylie, you see that? Oh, yeah. Oh, you do? See, I've never seen that. All the time. People put their Venmos on their socials. Have, have you heard of wish lists? Do you know about this? Yes. People, I, like, I know people that, I'm getting divorced. Here's my Amazon wish list. And uh -uh. they put together. Like a shower registry. Like a registry. And people do it. I just. That's too much. It's a bridge too far. It's a bridge too far. The gal wanting people to chip in to buy her a croissant. I just can't even imagine how you put your head on the pillow at night. I, that you're just brazenly grifting I your just, social media friends like that. I just think like, okay, so you think it's a good idea, but then you think about it. Then you put it up there and you look at it and you think, is that a good idea? But yet it's still on there days later, which means it never crossed your mind it was a bad idea. The fact that it, it it's always been a bad idea because it was even an idea. No, I know, but I'm just saying at no point did she pull right. out of the idea. I think at from, no point did she about face. I think from the inception of thinking that people need to contribute to your vacation. To your vacation. It just it, it is born in bad ideas. It stays it in bad going. ideas. And it's probably that brain is full of a lot of bad ideas. <laughs> That's not the only one. Right. Okay. It's probably a hotbed of bad ideas up in that gal's <laughs> So many brain. bad ideas that that was limited. Mm -mm. That's a grift. That's a fucking grift. That is grifting, grifting. and not even trying to hide the grift. No. It is, it is full-blown megachurch grift. Grift. Oh, my God. I saw the most hysterical. Speaking of megachurches, you know, any opportunity, I get to beat that. So I saw this uh, preacher, evangelical preacher. And he starts going bananas and he, he says, you see this here? And he's holding up a baseball bat. And he says, at the end of this baseball bat is a holy Bible. And I've got it duct taped and zip tied to this here baseball bat. You see that over there? That is a Barbie playhouse. <laughs> And he takes the baseball bat. And this is one of those mega church with the screens right. and the rock band. He's in 3D and, for sure. Yeah, the dunk tank, all the shit, right? So he starts beating the Barbie house up, right? He's beating the Barbie house. He's beating the Barbie house up. And here's the deal with this. There's a bunch of people that you can hear cheering, hooting, right. hollering, thinking this is the greatest thing ever. And here's just what I don't get. I get a solitary nut. Right. I understand that a person can be a complete nut and they're just a nut and everybody knows they're a nut. Right. Nobody listens to them. Nobody takes them seriously. This person is a stage five nut. What I don't get is when somebody's doing that ridiculous, <laughs> performative bullshit of duct taping a Bible to a baseball bat. To hit a Barbie house. To beat up a Barbie house. Where my brain has trouble is hearing all of the members of the audience. Great idea. Good. Yeah. Sock it to the kitchenette. <laughs> sock it to the sock Malibu to, dream home. Sock it to the master bedroom. <laughs> oh, yeah. Get that little Barbie chair. And that the enthusiasm that I heard from the audience in this video, that's where I'm like, so all of that is just a collection of nuts, enabling nuttery it's bananas. You act like you've never heard of a religious cult before. Well, I have, but I think that we as a society think of that as, you know, the Mormons that have a bunch of wives or the Duggars right, who have 25,000 kids. Typically, people think a megachurch 
especially in the part of the country where we live, is mainstream. Right. They and, and, and the truth of the matter is it is a cult and it's a grift. It's, it's a grifting racket. cult. <laughs> Mega churches are grifting cults. Put it in the permanent record. I Joe Estrada. <laughs> All right. The last one is from Olivia. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Pomps. <laughs> I'm originally from Poland, but I've been living in the U.S. for the past eight years. So I've accumulated an entire book of I've had it's about the American people. <laughs> so let me at least share one. I've absolutely fucking had it with these stupid ass Instagram moms saying things like, thank you, my baby, for choosing me to be your mommy. <laughs> no, you were raw dogging on vacation in Florida. You got pregnant and now you have a baby. <laughs> Don't make anything more of it. And besides, how fucking narcissistic of you to think that this baby, out of all the moms out there, would choose your stupid ass who posts stuff like that on Instagram. Fucking clowns. Anyways, love you guys. I can't. Oh my God. God. That is that so in- good. Jack that shit into my veins. It's so good. <laughs> it is the shit. best. Kyla, I need for you to text message that to me so I can put it in my sounds on my phone so I can yeah. just listen to it. When I need, when I need a, a, a some boost. people want to hear inspirational quotes right, to put them the in a good mood. I want to hear that. I got you. That the fucking me, clown at the end was the best. That puts me in a good mood. I love how narcissistic that you think that baby would choose you. <laughs> <laughs> what about what about you? You were raw, raw dogging <laughs> in Florida. <laughs> uh, it's true. The Instagram mom culture. It's bad. It's so over the top. She's probably talking about a two or three year old that doesn't have Instagram, so the kid's not seeing it. So it's right. totally performative. Wouldn't it be nice if like in 18 years you could follow that same person, the kid gets on and goes, that woman was the biggest fucking nut. I hated her guts. Just go on and on and on. And I didn't choose her. I was forced to come out that uterus. <laughs> no, that was bad. That was great. No, the, she's right, though. The Instagram mom culture in America is just it's so over the top. It's like being a mother is this new original right. First thing. generation, and that's this ever been. child is the most, the first of its species of its <laughs> kind that's ever, you know, walked the planet Earth. And I chose this child, and this child chose me, and serendipity fucking injecting into the veins. And it's total bullshit. You bred, you bred, you fucked, you raw dogged, you popped out a kid, right? Okay, your kid is every bit as special <laughs> as everybody else's, which is not that special. <laughs> and your journey into motherhood is about like ours. It just is what it is. It is what it is. It's wonderful to you You. and to you personally. Sometimes it's a pain in the ass. And I think it's more refreshing. I do too. When I hear a mother say, being a mother is so great, but it's also equal parts exhausting, lonely, isolating, miserable, and difficult. And that's the type of mother I want to talk to. Those are the people I gravitate to. The The Stepford wives that put out this whole, you know, I, I can't take it. It's too I can't much. Take it. But you know what's so great about at our age, again, is that we've cultivated our friends so well that those people are at arm's length. Oh, yeah. Like we might see them on Instagram, but that's as close as they're going to get. I saw on Instagram the other day, a gal was um, posting, she was recommending, uh, I think we've talked about this before, but it's worth a revisit, <laughs> uh, recommending school drop off looks. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah. I remember you sent that to me and I just thought, go fuck yourself. Nobody except you cares what you're wearing at drop off. Nobody. Right. Universally. You're right. the only person out of 8 billion people that cares. And for you to post it on the Instagram as a drop off look, I mean, that just the height of narcissism. And it goes back to this point. You really shouldn't be up at your kid's school. Right. And the schools, these t- it's not good for the teachers. No. It's not good for the administrators. And it sure as fuck isn't good for these kids because just as much as a mom needs a break from the kid, the kid, kid yes. needs a break from the mom. My kids needed a break from me. They, they needed did. to go play with people their size. 
with their same developmental right. stage and they needed to make friends. And I, I'm, I oppose these parents helicoptering around these schools. It's ridiculous. It wasn't like that when we were younger. No, it was not. I think it exacerbates anxiety. I think it's a pain in the ass for these teachers. It's a pain in, pain in the ass for these administrators. And I think that they need to stand up full force and if people want to go dictate what goes on in public schools and they don't like it, then fucking homeschool your kid. Right. But that's an easy fix. Get out all your textbooks and you right. sit there with your fucking brat and you homeschool them. But don't go piling on to all these poor teachers because your child chose you and y'all have this most <laughs> unique bond that no other mother and child have, have ever, ever experienced any species. on the fucking planet Earth. Right. Fuck off. But one thing I want to point out to the listener is when you would drop off your kids in the robe before your white suburban petri dish of a car had even come out of the circle drive for drop off, a surgical glove was put on your hand. Oh, yeah. A Marlboro light box was packed. Oh, absolutely. You were lighting a girt in this red robe as you're pulling out a <laughs> with carpool a line with the mother who you're having to pass the mother who right. says, I'm so glad this child chose me, giving you the stink eye. <laughs> in her outfit of the day. In her outfit of the day as you're blowing smoke out the window. Yeah. That shit is fucking great. It is. And remember that one day I called you, I was like pulling out a carpool, lit up my cigarette and a mom in front of me lit out the cigarette. And I remember I called you, I was like, oh my God, there's two of us. I'm so happy. <laughs> Yeah, she got she was blowing smoke out of hers too. Yeah, I was barely out of carpool line before I was. Uh huh. Do you think your kids were glad they chose you in that moment? I think my kids are always so glad they chose me every minute of the day. And that's just such a. I mean, uh, that's so stupid. It's so stupid. Here's what all it is: is what she said. You're raw dogging. <laughs> On Everybody, everybody's all hot and bothered. <laughs> And that, that's all there is to it. And you've got this person's set of genetics and this person's set of right. genetics. And it's just a scientific thing happens with all species, not unique to you. The kid didn't choose you. The kid didn't choose you. I hate to break your heart. Yeah. Fuck her. Fuck her. Love the gal from Poland. What's her name? That was Olivia. Olivia. Love Olivia. Olivia, that goes down in the I've had it hall of fame. Yes. Because some people want inspirational quotes. I want that shit. I want that shit. That too. puts me in a good mood. <laughs> And I don't care who knows it. <laughs> well, listen up, listener. You know, I mean, we've just been fired up. Spreading sunshine like we do. Absolutely. And, you know, for those of you that got triggered, that made it to the end, quit taking everything we say so seriously. Quit a, being a titty baby. B, go fuck yourself. <laughs> quit being a titty baby. You'll quit be fine. Titty, yeah. And, um... Go find us, um, link in bio on all of our socials. We're on tour. We're having so much fun with that. It's so a blast. Fun. I mean, Pumps on Tour is just an absolute sensation. The crowds <laughs> that this woman is bringing are only Kylie, comparable to the crowds of Princess Diana. <laughs> Shut up. And don't forget every Wednesday documentary club. On Patreon. So yes. every Wednesday, please join us on Patreon. We are reviewing documentaries. Pumps and I are doing hard Hitting Freudian style investigative journaling. Yep. Journaling. Journalism. 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 And then follow us. But the most important thing is five star review. Five star review and send us your DMs on the I've Had It Instagram account. So Voice we can memos do this again. in the DMs. Voice memo in the DMs. Voice memos in the DMs. Listen, we don't know what the fuck we're doing. Right. I'm surprised y'all even made it this far. <laughs> tell them when we'll see them. See you next Thursday or see you next Tuesday or both. <laughs> <laughs>